Hey, welcome everybody. Bob Martin here, World Fishing Alliance, and we're really excited about this episode of the podcast. Um, we've got Mr. Tom Warren on with us, and uh, we're really excited to uh, not only have Tom here with us tonight, but also um, Tom's done a couple videos for us, and Tom is going to be doing more and more videos for us, and Tom is also going to be the first fishermen that we put into our what we're going to call our academy and that's not necessarily a teaching uh, about the uh, sport of fishing it's teaching about the business of fishing so Tom we're going to grow his his presence on, online we're going to teach him how to about how to uh, run a fishing business and all kinds of things like that but first Tom we're really really excited to have you here so welcome thanks for being here yeah, thanks, Bob. It's a real honor to be with your uh, your company here, World Fishing Alliance. It's a growing brand here, and I'm just really excited to see what we can do. And we're all passionate about the sport of fishing, so I, I can't wait to see where this goes. Yeah, so we met, just a little backstory, we met about, gosh, it might be six weeks ago now, I think. About that, a month ago, maybe, two months yeah, ago. Yeah, and we had lunch um, out on, uh, we're in Minnesota, so we were on White Bear Lake, and uh, the goal was just to see you know, if maybe we could work together. And uh, my company had seen Tom's um, videos and, um, you know, we we're impressed with what he was doing. And so that's, you know, we pinged him and, and that's how this relationship came, came to be. And, um, you know, just that first little meeting and then here we are today, you know, growing Tom's brand here. But guess what? Tom recently accepted a job with Wells Fargo in Minneapolis. TCF Bank. TCF. Oops, wrong bank. Sorry, TCF. Okay. And um, so now Tom has the dilemma of balancing the passion for fishing with, you know, paying the bills and uh, and and getting a paycheck. How's it working so far? It, it's it's going well actually. You know, uh, you, you just got to get your your priorities straight and everything like that. And you know, for me, fishing something I've been passionate about so much since I was since I was young and. You know, every minute that I'm not at work or with a family or something like that, I, I want to be on the water, just like so many people. So, uh, you know, now the rubber really meets the road. You have to really be careful with your time and, and put in, you know, your, your work at work and then put in your work on the water as well. So there's plenty of time on evenings to get out and fish. It, it, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but, you know, it, it's really just kind of a, a nice adjustment. There's a, a lot of good local lakes around Minnesota. We're not like down south where you have to drive an hour to your nearest lake. You can drive. Right. For, where I live in, in Andover or Ham Lake uh, in the North Metro, there's like a handful of lakes within 15 minutes of me. So I think it's a good opportunity for me to kind of hunker down with some lakes and really get uh, really familiar with a, a few lakes instead of trying to, you know, learn, a you know, juggle 20, 30 different lakes. Because, I mean, there are like 50 good lakes within the, the area. Have you figured it out yet? I mean, you've only been working for a couple of weeks, but have you, have you figured out the whole schedule and, you know, how much time you can spend in the evenings on the lake yet? Yeah, it depends on traffic, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, yep. yeah I mean, if I, if I hustle back from work, I can get about two hours or so on the water, uh, which is nice. You know, I love being out there for full days and, you know, fishing for a good six to ten hours and whatnot. But you have to put yourself in a whole different mindset when you're on a lake and you've only got two hours. It right. really just you have to fish, and I'm learning that really quickly. So, uh, you know, you get out to a lake, you got to really get on the fish, fish quickly and you kind of have to change your mindset. So it's just, it's not better or worse, just different. And as a fisherman, you know, to the fishing side of things, anything that you can do to get a little bit extra experience is going to help you in the long run. So it's all good stuff. Right. Where did, where did your passion for fishing start? Like your, what's your earliest memory with your dad, your grandpa? How did yeah. this start? Yeah, well, I'm so blessed to have grandparents that are so close that, that live on a lake. And that's where my mom grew up in northern Wisconsin. And we'd spend, you know, I, I say I'm from Minnesota and Wisconsin, really, because I spent all my summers growing up in Wisconsin uh, on the, at the lake. And, you know, when I got to the lake, that was fishing time. I wanted to fish with grandpa. And uh, when I got older, I could go on my own. But my earliest memory was fishing for crappie with my grandpa, fishing for trout with my grandpa, um, with my sisters some, just sometimes just the two of us on our own um just just fishing and that that's that's kind of how the bug started yeah that that seems to be with a lot of people it's a common thread of fishing is you know grandpa's with the grandkids yeah you know and teach them out or or dad too but 
Um, I, I've got a lot of memories with my grandfather as well. So, it, it, like I said, it's a common thread in fishing. Grandpas do good things. Yeah. It, you pass it right down through from you know, over one generation to the next and That's right. uh, whatnot. Where, where's your, when you were a kid, were you fishing around your, uh, your house or again at the lake primarily? Yeah. Okay. yeah I, I did not fish in Minnesota Lake until practice for my first tournament ever. No kidding. Yep. It was on East and West Rush Lake, which if you're Minnesota, you know where that is. Right. And I did not fish a lake that wasn't our cabin lake, which was in Hayward until practice for my first tournament ever. Uh, which is when I was a freshman in high school or something like that. And what is milfoil? Like I'd never seen yeah. milfoil. Like, the water isn't super clear. Like, what is this? Right. And, um, it was just that learning experience. I, I remember the first experience I ever had in that lake was just miserable. I didn't catch a fish and um, you know, for it to be a tournament nonetheless coming up soon. And that yeah. was just, yeah. Well, that can't. milfoil can be a totally, that it can be a, its own discussion. But we, oh, yeah. We, we sure. don't want to go there for this for this <laughs> discussion. But were you fishing in high school or, or and then later in college, like a high school or college team? Yeah, so I mostly just fished kind of on my own with friends and whatnot through high school. Um, I, I entered one tournament in high school. It was um, uh, the, the state championship, the state tournament. Uh, me and a friend participated in that. That was the only – uh, that was the only tournament I ever did in high school, like through, you know, high school fishing or college fishing. I did, you know, tournaments with different organizations and whatnot. But um, through college, you know, I, I'm a, I graduated from University of Wisconsin Eau Claire just in May, like we were talking about earlier. And uh, that's one of my biggest regrets is not getting a fishing team started. They had an outdoors club, uh, they did fishing stuff, and it's one of my biggest regrets not to get a tournament fishing uh, thing started because with Bassmaster and FLW and all these big tournament tournament organizations they have so much money into these college fishing programs now and for anyone who's listening to this who's coming up to college or in college you definitely want to get started in that you know even if you're not thinking of doing it for your career it, it's fun I think the entry I'm not super familiar with this but I'm pretty sure the entry fees are free and there's a lot of money in those um, right now so that's definitely something that you want to check on I'm no expert because I didn't do it but like I said that's one of my bigger regrets was was not being able to get into something formal through my college. And that's something that we hope to um, do in the future is, is help promote those college teams, college tournaments, all that type of thing. We, you know, we haven't done that yet. We're a young organization. I don't know how that's going to look, but that's certainly, you know, somewhere out there, you know, to, to help build the, the, the sport and, and grow it as much as we can. Yep. You got to get into fishing because, you know, video games are nice and TV is nice, but I saw someone on Facebook uh, but Minnesota fishing licenses have had a new all-time low this year. Wow. So, well, there's work to do, right? We yeah. got a lot of promoting to do. We do. How many tournaments have you been in so far? Well, how many? Uh, maybe 15 or 20. Um, nothing okay. huge. Uh, the biggest one was probably that high school state championship that I don't honestly remember how we placed. We didn't win. I think we got like eighth or so. we finished like 50th percentile or something like that. But I, I try to get into a handful a year. And I'm trying to get into more because I learn way more in a tournament than I do uh, just on my own. Because when you get into a tournament, your whole mindset has to change. You're on the clock, you know, even in smaller derbies and whatnot. You know, it's not like you're fishing for 100,000 or anything like that. You don't need to make it an overly stressful experience, but you make your mind think in a different way. And when you're fishing against others who are so good, um, you can learn from them. You know, if you're fr you get close to them, you become friends with them, you can learn stuff at a way fast. It's, it's all about shortening that that learning curve or shallowing it, whatever it's called, right, you know, narrowing right. the learning curve a little bit, which is what we're here to do right. um, for, for part of it. And tournament fishing is a great way to, you, well, you don't wait, have to spend a lot of money either. So but wait a second. You said one of the biggest one was your high school tournament. I think one of the biggest ones was the last one you were in. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That, that was one of the bigger ones. Uh -huh. Yeah. Tom, uh, he's a little shy, but he was leading on day one and he finished second overall and he caught, uh, you know, some really nice, some really nice largemouth. And we'll, we'll show them so you can see them right now. They're really, really nice largemouth. And I think you were just almost, you weren't there f that far away from winning the whole doggone thing. No, I, I was close. I guess I'll talk about it for a, a second. But it, I, I did forget about that. Yeah, it was just a couple weekends ago, a little derby here. But my best, my best finish yet, I was able to take a second place. 
fishing a two day tournament here. And, um, you know, I'll say the lakes, if you're in Minnesota, you know, the area, but, uh, Forest Lake was the first day and Forest Lake's a really tough lake. If you've ever been on it before, you know, you're usually lucky to kind of scrape up nine, 10, 11 pounds. And I hadn't fished it in five years, four years. And I went out for practice. I found nothing. Like I was, what do I do? And, um, you know, I found one good spot with my, with my side imaging, with my electronics. And it was just a hard bottom point with green grass, which is important this time of year. And hard bottom is always important. And I pulled up to it in the morning and I actually got some of the baits that I was throwing here with me. Um, just a drop shot really was, was, was key. And, um, let's see how this goes on the screen, but I was just fishing a drop shot. Um, real common bass rig there. And yep. I, got, I, I got a limit to five casts, five, five fish and five casts. So that went well. And I just mixed up different drop shot baits. This is a, one of my favorites is a zoom Z drop worm. Uh, another one of my favorites is just a Senko. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and um, between that and then I, I was able to, to call up with a few bigger fish later in the day uh, with the Texas rig. And then uh, another bait here, which is a strike King Bitsy jig with Bitsy bug jig, which is an awesome bait. Uh, finesse fishing if you're around a tough lake like that with smaller fish and uh, you're trying to get that big bite um, that that bitsy bug jig is just a little smaller profile right and you pair it up with something like a, a rage car or something like that i bite a little bit off the tip of it so it, it goes on there a little bit shorter right that few key few key calls for me later and uh i won't go into it too much but you know i got 15 pounds the first day and then the second day was on green lake which is another lake in the area and I caught enough there, just enough. It was a it was a tough day, but I caught a couple of big fish early on my drop shot, or the Texas rig actually, and I just kind of rode it out from there. So second place was was it was really fun, just you know to be in the tournament and to, to be leading it just had a whole different feel. So it was it was a blast. I was super blessed. It was an awesome weekend. Yeah, we saw the video. You were pretty pumped. It was really cool to see. <laughs> yeah. How do you, yeah, how do you sure. judge what tournaments you you enter? How do you pick? You know, for me, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I don't. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of money into tournaments at this point, you know, in my life. So I just look for something that's, uh, that doesn't have a, you know, too terribly big of an entry fee. And, uh, you know, so something that's local, you know, I don't want to drive all the way to Grand Rapids or all the way to Brainerd for tournaments or when I like to fish, I love to fish all over Minnesota, but if it's a tournament, um, you know, to get out and practice a couple times, something that's local is nice. Right. Would you ever, I mean, you've done obviously a lot of fishing. Uh, how about guiding? Is that something you're interested in doing? I would almost rather guide at this point in my life, you know, looking forward, I would almost rather, you know, if I could choose, but I'd rather have a life of tournament fishing or a life of guiding. I think I might choose a life of, of being able to be a guide. And I, it's something I would love to do. That's on my radar for, you know, short term to long to medium term in my future. But, but I love teaching people how to fish and, uh, you know, which is why this is, you know, going to, this is working so well with you, Bob, uh, with this, with world fishing Alliance here. But, um, we you love guide, you can do you can fish you can teach kids and, and stuff. Yeah. We love the picture that you posted of uh, you with the two two youngsters on the boat. Yeah, that was cool. That's, that's one of my favorite pictures. Uh, his their mom got that or something. It's just at the cabin. Um, there's a lot of kids up there that my grandparents know or their family friends or whatnot, and uh, I've been taking them out for a few years. It's just it's fun to watch them get older and they've they've caught the bug too. So you'll probably uh, know them in another few years or something that like sounds, that yeah that sounds great and that they were it was your boat that was used and talk about your boat setup yeah um you know I'm, I'm fortunate to have a bass boat it's about an 18 19 footer so it's good on you know I, I got it so I could fish tournaments and some some bigger bodies of water so that uh you know a bigger boat can take the waves and that kind of thing and whatnot with the live wells for the fish and whatnot uh but uh, it's not the fanciest thing in the world it's got a it's got a trolling motor on the front a uh, motor guide uh, 80 pounds of thrust on there. So you can take, you know, most of the waves and whatnot, uh, 175 on the back. So you can get places pretty quick sure. um, especially on your own. Um, but you know, it's, I, I like hummingbird electronics wise. Um, I've used other brands. I, I've had the most six or seen other brands. I haven't used them, but I've, I'm pretty familiar with hummingbird. I've been using their brand, their products for my whole life now. So that's just a confidence for me. It works well. How much time do you have to spend maintaining the boat? Uh, n not as much as I should probably, if you want me to be honest, but maintenance <laughs> is so important. That's probably the answer that every fisherman will give you, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, a few things that I like to do, I mean, you got to change your oil and everything like that, but you know, a few things that, that I like to do with, that come down to maintenance, I don't think most people think of, I'll mention a couple of them, but first take a file, 
go to your trolling motor prop and sharpen that thing until it's a blade. They come dull. I mean, like they're rounded and everything in the package and you'll, there's nothing in fishing that annoys me. Just ask anyone I fish with than getting grass on my trolling motor. I can't stand it. It's just my pet. It'll drive me up the wall. So I take a knife or a file, you know, be careful, obviously, but sharpen that thing until it's really sharp and uh, do it throughout the year. Begin to nick in it. And uh, that'll really reduce the amount of grass. So that's a little maintenance thing that I do. Uh, and then another maintenance thing that I like to do, not super boat directly boat related, but I like to take my electronics to home birds and I like to dump all the waypoints onto my computer and I can't go into it in full detail because it would take forever, but selfless, shameless plug here. I actually do have a video on, on my YouTube channel about it. Yeah. I learn more and it. And everyone that I've talked to has been like, Whoa, this is amazing. Yeah. And I it, saw it. It is amazing. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So definitely go check it out. Maybe we can put a link or something like that to it. We will at the, well, at the end. Sure. Uh, but that was a really, really cool video. And it was, yeah, I saw it. I like, wow, that's really a cool use of electronics. And yeah, and so that's computer. something I like to do just to organize and sort. I'm a very visual person. I like everything organized and folded and everything like that. So it's just a, no, a new way to organize your waypoints and stuff so that you can be more efficient and catch more fish. That's what we're all about. Right. <laughs> right. And I should, uh, I should point out to the audience here that your background is in sort of IT, right? Computer yeah. mm -hmm. uh, uh, information technology. And that's what you're doing at um, TCF Bank. But that sure. was a really cool sort of integration of the, of the, um, the tech, you know, the, the computer, the laptop and Google and also your, Google um, yeah, Google Earth and your, um, your electronics on the boat. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So we'll put a link to that down in the video or we're, it's going to be down in the video, I guess. Up yeah, down. It's down, <laughs> up down. But, um, you know, you did uh, a couple of the, the first video you did, you used the KVD uh, Junior, right? There you go. The Strike King. Did that, is that one of your favorites or did that happen to be, you know, what it took on that day? Uh, a little bit of both, I guess. Um, a, a, a top water is not what I would call a super confidence bait for me. But in the early summer, what happens? What happened in that video is the bluegills, they just – and you can watch the, the video, obviously, for the, for the full details. I won't spoil it here. But the bluegills, they school up in these massive schools. And forever, I would, you know, throw finesse baits and try to catch them and whatnot. It just doesn't seem to work as well as throwing something on the surface. And they just react to that a little bit better. But the, the top water is a fun bait to fish. I catch some really big fish, largemouth and smallmouth, um, within a year on that top water. But it, I wouldn't say it's it's my favorite go to. It's it's rigged up a lot because it's it's a niche kind of bait. Like when it's working, it's really working, and when it's not working, you really won't do too well on it. Um, so I wouldn't say it's a super confidence bait. Some of my confidence baits that I really throw a lot are the drop shot. It's just it's a fish catching machine, really. You know, the spring, I don't throw it a lot, but as soon as you get to summer and those fish start to move out a little bit deeper, it's hard to find a day that they won't hit that drop shot. Um, a jig's another bait that I throw a lot. Um, I actually have a chatter bait here. A chatter bait's a bait that I throw an awful lot. Uh, I caught my new personal best just a couple weeks ago on this, on this chatter bait here, so it's definitely near and dear to my heart. But right. Baits like that, those are some of my confidence baits, and the, the top water is, is kind of in the middle. There, I like to throw it a lot. It'll get a big bite. And there's nothing like seeing a fish. Oh, explosion is awesome. It's per, it's so, so cool. 12 inch will make your heart stop. <laughs> yeah, <it will. laughs> What's what about uh, reels? Bait caster, spin casting. Yeah. What do you favor? Um, and I have mostly bait casting reels. Um, I, I have a few spinning reels that I, that I always have tied up with a drop shot with a Ned rig. Um, if you don't know what a Ned rig is, I don't have one actually with me, but it's, uh, you can look it up. It's just a super, super fish catching machine. It's a little jig head with like a two or three inch piece of plastic. It's the dumbest looking thing in the world. And it catches a snot out of fish. It's amazing. But, um, but no, I use mostly bait casters just because I think as a bass fisherman, you're usually throwing lures that are a little bit heavier and whatnot versus lighter jigs and stuff. But um, they, both of them can play a key a key uh, role in your arsenal day to day. Anything new in the industry, lure wise or electronic wise, that you've seen that's really really cool? Altrex, one word, Altrex. Right. If you haven't heard of the the Minkota Altrex, um, you really have to to know about it. It's um, 
I don't have one yet. I'll be totally honest with you, but I've fished with guys who have, and I, I haven't heard a review that's not six out of five stars on that thing. Sure. Uh, sure. Push a button and it electronically anchors you to your spot. It's, it's unbelievable. All the elite series guys, no offense to other brands, but they've ditched, they've had to ditch the other brands for um, the fact that this has a button that you can push. It'll hold you on your spot in the waves. It'll four foot waves. Doesn't matter. Uh, 20 minutes while you retie a bait or, or hang out with your family in the back, if that's what you're doing. Or, you know, in a tournament, if you're in the back with the live wells, you know, I can't even imagine how effective that would be. If, you know, if, I'm, if you're on a spot, deep water, for example, and you hook into a fish, you do not want to spook that school. You have to stay off of them. And it's a juggling act because you got to get the fish in the boat. You got to get the net. You're trying not to, you know, the wind might be blowing you. Oh, yeah. Spot. Yeah. Been there, done that. Course. Oh, for sure. And then you got to retie because there's a pike, of course. And then you got to go to your live well and call out a fish or something like that. You can just push a button and let it sit there. Um, you know, it, I know it's a lot of money and trust me, I'm saving up for it. It's a pinch and pennies to save up for it too. But if you can afford that, that's better than any reel, any rod, any lure. There's nothing else. The trolling motor is the center of your boat. It's that's right. And so if you have some pennies to pinch and you can afford that piece of technology, you will be so far ahead of the game. It, it will change the way you fish. It, it, when when you when you are fishing and getting ready for a tournament or you have a new lake and you can't pre-fish it what what things do you look for uh-huh oh that's a, that's a tough question to answer in a, in a short way but i love to fish new lakes like i would rather something about it like i would rather fish a new lake that might be good than a good lake that i know is good like, let me let me just pre preface yeah. some context for that question because you know, the vast majority of us are not tournament fishermen that are pre-fishing before tournaments, right? So, you know, out on a lake for the first time and it's like, okay, where do I go? You know, mm -hmm. so that's that's why I asked you that question. Maybe help some people out. Yeah. You know, when I get out onto a lake, if you've got electronics, I'm certainly keep an eye on, keeping an eye on those with my GPS. Um, if you don't have electronics, that's okay. Go to your, go to, um, go to Google and type in Navionics and you can pull up the entire survey of lakes. Look at it and find some spots that, that have structure, points, break lines, bars, reefs, anything that looks different. Look for something that when you look at the map, your eyes, boom, go to that section where your eyes, where the lines come together or spread apart. Drop-offs and flats are going to be just 101, like bass fishing 101. Those are where bass love to hang out. And, you know, I probably don't do a great job of this, but, you know, what everyone would say, pick up a fast-moving bait first that you can cover water with, a crankbait, yeah. a water spinnerbait, swim jig, chatterbait. Yep. And if you can't get a bite. And if you can get a bite, stop. Pick up a jig, pick up a drop shot, something you can fish slower. Um, and and it, it depends on the time of year, too, to really finish that question off. Spring, yep. shallow. Summer, deep. Fall can really be either, in my opinion. And, and in Minnesota, we don't have a winter. Um, so I can't tell anything about that. Right. That's just a really good one-on-one to start off with. And if I'm, if I do have my electronics, if you do have side imaging, I'm, I've got that thing on and my eyes are glued to it because I'm looking for rocks, weed lines, hard bottom, anything that looks different that those bass are going to relate to a little bit more. Yeah. Is there any, are there any sort of hurdles you've had to overcome, you know, getting to this point, uh, you know, in your fishing life so far? Yeah. You know, fishing related. Fishing related. Yeah. You know, I think just, you know, keeping an open mind, to all the techniques that are out there and try not to become overly saturated with, with some of that stuff. Um, and just to fish, you know, electronics are going to make you a better fisherman, but you still have to know how to catch fish and you can watch, you know, tons of videos and you can mm. talk to people and you still have to just go on the water and fish. And you that, have to you have to know that that touch, right? And you you, you have, have to, to do this. You have to figure that out, and you yeah. can't do it on a video. No, you, you can't do it. Yeah. Definitely not on a video game. Right. You right. can't do it on here. <laughs> right. So, um, and and you know, I've like I said, I've been blessed. I just I love the outdoors, and my parents get me outdoors, so it's not like anything like that necessarily. But you just have to get out and fish. And I'm not sure if that's necessarily answering the question or, or whatnot, but um, I think no, just all right. putting all the pieces together, because every day a new piece of the puzzle gets thrown at you when you fish and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Or maybe it's like, wow, this totally doesn't make sense. The conditions are setting up perfect for this, 
but it's not working. So every day is a new piece to a puzzle that is an infinite size is kind of like the way I look at it. So you're always learning. Yeah, and then all those pieces that you were talking about um, and the resources that you have, like in the yeah. boat and your, your tackle and all those things, is there one thing that you can't live without? That's a tough uh, question. Not, not to be redundant, but I mean, technically a trolling motor, right? Yeah. Uh, electronics, I think, are a pretty close second. But um, you know, if, I, if, if I could even pick one lure, I'm not sure it would necessarily even be one lure necessarily because, you know, any given day, a, a lure can work better than another based on the season. But I think, um, you know, just having equipment that, you, you know, take, take care of your equipment and make sure it's, it's in ready condition doesn't have to be high in equipment. You know, you, you don't need to spend a hundred bucks on whatever you can spend less and just maintain it well, be organized on the water. And I think, you know, if you put that type, that sort of work in, you're going to see results on the water more. Right. And what, so you're, let's, let's just think back. Your 15 year old self. Yeah. And your 25, 22 year old self, what mm -hmm. would you tell the 15 year old in terms of, you know, what, what advice you would give to the 15 year old or any 15 year old that wants to get into fishing? That's a really tough question again, too. But I, I think one of the most important things is to become confident in a few different techniques. And some people might tell you to try to learn everything, but I, I got to be honest, you really can't learn everything right away. You just have to pick up a few baits that you're confident with and more is not more in terms of tackle more is not necessarily better so don't feel like you need to to, to take out a mortgage or a loan to, to to get all the different types of baits that there are in the world pick a few finesse worm a craw a jig creature a few different baits and just get comfortable with those and, and master excuse me master something versus trying to become you know get your foot in the door of a whole bunch of different things because that's kind of what i did and i spent too much money you know, early on trying to, you know, get, get good at everything and, and, and just be familiar with everything. But I think in the long run, if you can find a few baits that you're confident with, you know, get good with those and then start adding layers to the puzzle. And eventually you'll get to everything. You can fish your whole life. You'll get, you'll have time to catch fish on everything. But I think just keeping an open mind and, um, you know, being open to all the different techniques and everything that are out there, but getting, find something you're good at and get good at it is kind of something I yeah. wish I did a that's that's perfect. Well, hey, you know this has been really really good, Tom, and uh, it's really um, we're, we're really happy to be working with you. And um, this discussion has been really really cool. However, we are going to go into our lightning round right now. Oh boy! All right. So I'm just going to give you. I got five questions, and you know, two word answers, one or two word answers. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? What's the yep. what's the biggest lie about fishing? They're not biting. All right. It's never true. Like, I, I know this is supposed to be lightning round. I'll, I'll talk faster. But <laughs> I can be in a tournament, and I'll be like, oh, man, it was tough. No one caught him today. Someone comes in with 20 pounds. Never tell yourself. I can't tell you how many people I fish with. They're like, they're not biting today. No, they're not. Work harder. All you, right. You, and you will strike out, but you'll eventually find them. Okay, good answer. All right, second one. Two characteristics of a successful fisherman. Um. I don't like to use the word patience. I like persistence better. So I'll pick persistence and, um, uh, yeah, P patience is too. Like I'm going to wait for the fish to bite. Persistence is like, you're going after them. Uh, open-minded. If someone's right. not work, find another way. All right. That works. What are you grateful for today? Um, I I'd say probably faith, family, and friends is when it comes down to three F's. You can't Perfect. really live with faith, family, and friends. There you go. Perfect. Best advice a mentor gave you. Um, oh boy. Um, best advice a mentor gave me. Are you fishing related or not fishing related necessarily? Uh, anything. Um, we got you. We stumped you. Yeah, you kind of stumped me. I don't know. I mean, I've gotten a lot of good advice. Sifting through memory, I'm not sure I can find one. Just, I guess, persistence and just work ethic. Just All right. work hard and, and don't accept less than you want. That's the good one. Work ethic. I like that one. Okay, favorite music? Uh, um, I love rock. 
but Dave Matthews Band is my jam. I'm mm-hmm. always listening to Dave Matthews. I am obsessed with it. All right, favorite food? Um, I love burgers. I love steak. I love hamburger and chicken, I guess. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, that's awesome, Tom. It's been so much fun talking to you uh, today, and um, we really look forward to uh, working with you more and, and uh, yeah, same here. seeing the how-to videos and uh, seeing you grow as a, as a fisherman. And we're really, really happy to help you um, grow as much as possible and as fast as possible. And um, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, and how, you know, what are, you, what are your channels? Yeah, so I got a Facebook. It's not totally fishing related, but you can follow me there. The, the stuff I post on Facebook and Instagram are usually the same. And I, um, I post, you know, meaty content. I don't want to post fluffy stuff necessarily. So it's a good follow. Tom Warren is my Facebook and Tom Warren Fishing is my Instagram. And uh, if you've got any fishing related questions, like I said with the guiding, I love talking about fishing. So if you shoot me a message, I can't guarantee you I'll respond within a minute, but I will respond if it's a Facebook message or an Instagram message about anything. Um, and a YouTube channel as well as Tom Warren Fishing. And I've got uh, a lot of videos that I've got, a lot of content that I've worked on out there about all things fishing. And if you want a video that I don't have, shoot me a message or post a comment and I'll, I'll work on it. Well, you just gave me a really cool idea and we could do, um, we could do maybe a Facebook Live or another one of these types of, of That'd be awesome. with – you know, take questions and then I could, do, it'd be like, ask Tom, right? Let's do it. I like Let's it. Do, can I add something to that? Maybe we could even do it while we're fishing. Now Maybe. you got something. I love yeah. it. Like half fishing, you know, answering questions, something like that. And we, we can work something out. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks no, I love answering questions and everything. So if you get, if you guys have any questions, I would, I'd love and uh, I'd yeah, love to yeah. Awesome. yeah. We'll set that up. But thanks a lot for being with us. This has been awesome, like I said. And guys, give Tom a follow on Instagram and follow, uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel and look forward to more videos uh, that Tom will be producing for us and for himself in the future. And so in the meantime, lots of tight lines, and thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great one. Go catch some fish.